Hello, my name is Mayu, and my family and I are beekeepers located outside of Kyoto, Japan. Japan has two kinds of honeybees the imported Western bee and the native Japanese honeybee. We practice traditional methods and keep our native Japanese honeybees in a traditional Japanese beehive, otherwise known as a pile box hive. Today, I would like to share some of our traditional methods with you. In the previous video, I used the drip method to extract honey, which involves cutting each section of the comb indicated by the red lines. After cutting the comb and letting it drip for 24 hours, the honey dripped out of the comb down to the bottom of the plastic box. However, about 30% of the honey still remains in the comb. So I would like to remove the honeycomb from the wooden box and squeeze the remaining honey in the combs. So, first, in order to extract the remaining honey, I'm going to cut it out of the box. I'm using this type of bag to keep the honeycomb together so that it's easier to squeeze the honey out. Any type of nylon bag with this type of texture will do. Make sure the spacing isn't too fine so that the honey can easily seep out. This is a special stand that we made for extracting honey. There are four hooks, one at each corner. As you can see, I can easily attach the netting to the hooks. I just have to set it up like this. I'm going to put the box on top of the stand. Now it's not so heavy after letting the honey drip out for 24 hours. Before using the drip method extraction, the box weighed around 7 or 8 kilograms. I'm going to use this hive tool to cut the comb. First, I'm going to cut all four sides. There are a lot of honeybees flying around, but I'm not too worried about them stinging me since they are more interested in collecting the honey. Oh, the comb here is quite hard, so I have to push a bit more firmly. Now that I've finished detaching the comb from the sides of the inside of the box, I'm going to turn the box over. It's a little bit tricky to turn the box upside down. Alright, now I'm also going to cut this side in the same manner as I did to the other side. I've now finished cutting the comb, but I can't just push the comb out because inside each box there is a wire crossbar. This wire crossbar prevents the honeycomb from falling down. But we can see a small piece has fallen into the netting. The stand really does make it easy to remove the comb. I'm going to continue to cut the rest of the comb along the wire crossbar. Now we can clearly see the crossbar and all the honeycomb is in the netting. I'm going to leave the box out for the bees to collect the remaining honey. I'm also leaving out the hive tool and the stand for the bees to clean. Earlier, I also removed the honeycomb from another box. 
So now, inside the orange netting, there is honeycomb from two boxes from a pile box hive. I'm now going to take this comb and squeeze out the remaining honey with a honey press. It makes extracting the remaining honey very easy, and it's so convenient to use. The inside of the honey press looks like this. We need a honey press like this because we extract honey around 100 times a year. If you only have a few colonies, it's not necessary to buy a honey press. In fact, you don't even have to buy any special equipment. For example, you can squeeze the honey out by hand, or you can even use some kitchen utensils. To use this honey press, you just have to place the honeycomb inside. And as you press down, the honey comes out from here. I can't use a centrifuge extractor because pile box hives don't have any frames and the honeycomb of Japanese honeybees is too soft to use a centrifuge extractor. Now let's get started with the extraction. First, I'm going to put the netting into the honey press. Now, I'm taking the top part of the honey press and placing it on top of the netting that contains the comb. I can now set up the press by first spinning this down into place. Once it reaches the top, I can secure it by lifting up the two latches on either side. At the very top, I insert the handle. This makes it possible to twist the press down. As it moves downwards, it squeezes the honeycomb, which will cause the honey to start to flow out from the funnel. This honey is very runny because it's warm outside today, and also because the honey from Japanese honeybees has a lower sugar content in comparison to Western bees. It's getting tougher to turn the handle. If you turn the handle too quickly, it will cause the honey to overflow. So make sure to be careful. The sugar content is 79.7. This is a little bit high. Even if you don't think there is any more honey to extract, go ahead and give the handle another turn just to be sure. It's going to take some time for all of the honey to drain out, so I'm going to leave this until tomorrow. I'll turn the handle a few more times just for good measure. One day has passed and as we can see, a lot of honey has been extracted. Let's see how much it weighs. It's 5.56 kilograms and the plastic container weighs 1.2 kilograms. So around 4.3 kilograms was extracted. Honey from two boxes was extracted, so around 2.15 kilograms was extracted per box. The drip method from the previous video resulted in 3 kilograms, so 3 kilograms plus the 2.15 kilograms that we extracted now means that one box contains around 5 kilograms of honey. The honey press is full of the wax from the honeycombs that we pressed yesterday. Let's open up and take a look. All of the comb has been compressed together, creating this solid disc. We can see that there is some honey remaining on the surface. It's around 5 centimeters thick. After all that pressing, this is what remains. There's still a little bit of honey that couldn't be extracted. I'm going to take the wax out of the netting to get a better look. 
The netting is a bit sticky and difficult to separate from the pressed honeycomb. The remaining honey will drip very slowly from this block of wax into the bottom of the plastic container. There may be some wax moth eggs and larvae remaining in the comb. In order to kill them, I'm going to place the block of wax in the freezer for about a month. This will kill any remaining eggs or larvae while the remaining honey drips out. Let's go ahead now and put the block of pressed honeycomb in the freezer. These are some honeycombs that were frozen about one month ago. They don't look very appealing, but can you see the honey here? Actually, this is the honey that we usually eat. Cleaning the equipment can be quite tedious, so I'm going to leave the equipment out for a few hours and let the bees do the work. And that will be all for today. Please make sure to like and subscribe to this channel to see our new uploads. Check out our Instagram for daily posts and our website for more detailed information on beekeeping in Japan and, of course, Japanese honeybees. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I will reply. Thank you for watching!